Hey everybody, welcome to Obscurities and Miniatures. Today we have the 10th anniversary Survivor Box and I'm finally going to get around to building. And I lucked out and got the Urza cover, which was the one I kind of wanted anyway, but you know, whatever. There are four different covers for the 10th anniversary Survivors, so, you know, not that it makes any difference, but let us take a look at what's inside. Now, I'm assuming that if you have any inclination to follow what goes on with Kingdom Death, you're probably well aware of what's going on here. So, first we get a big, well, there's a lot of paper this time. Okay. So we get the pattern system. You're going to need that. We have our flash, card, flash cards, postcards. Always nice to have cover color art to use for reference. So a lot of people online were having issues with the cards, and you can see I guess mine look okay. I'm not sleeping any of this stuff anyway, so I don't really care. I mean, yeah, some of these corners are a little bit not as rounded as they should be. I'll live. I mean, I don't think it's gonna be they are a bit I don't know, blemished. That's not the right word. Marked up, I don't know, scuffed, disheveled, I don't know. And then we have the actual cards that you make from the patterns. And again, some people online were having issues with things not being cut very straight. I mean, it looks straight enough to me. Like I said, I'm not going to make a big deal out of it. I think they're okay. I know the pictures I saw of other people's were much worse than mine. I'll leave that to the number crunchers and hardcore game players. Because they probably have a better idea of what's going on there than I do at the moment. I can do a prologue fight. It's about as extensive of knowledge as I have of the actual game at this point. Despite owning everything. So, one of the big pluses is that everybody in this set has their own custom base. If I can... There we go. That's the right side. Eventually we'll get the right side up. And you can see they all have the... Planes of faces, and some models have extra detailed parts there. I'm going to go ahead and get started with, oh, uh, what's his name? Zachariah or something? Oh, God, why do I always forget Zachary? That's close. We'll get Zach here cut out first, because he looks like he's going to be one of the easiest in terms of just the amount of parts. Yeah. So here you can see all the parts for Zachary all laid out. There are nine in all. You have actually a pretty simple construction and almost one of the most simplest I've seen in a Kingdom Death model in some time. You have the main body itself as one huge piece. You have the entire head and back shoulders as another piece like that. You have the rear of his loincloth slash skirt armor that I need to clean off better, which gets you to about that point. And then the arms are just nice, easy, thick slots. And one thing to notice is that there's this peg here on one of the axes, and the other one just kind of rests inside it. So everything slots together neat and nice. The base itself has a nice big spot for him to stand. You have the sword that straps on his back. And there's a nice little plug right there. And then there is a lantern that I'm not sure yet where it goes, but you know what, by the time I'm done, We'll get it all dealt with. No worries there. And like I said, pretty simple and easy construction for a Kingdom Death figure especially. I think that's pretty pretty doable. So let's get them all put together here. Now we got Zachary all put together, except for the lantern, but that's okay. So you can see he's a pretty big dude, very well detailed. It's going to be kind of a pain to get to the inside of his chest there, but that's, you know, that's life. We'll deal with it. I don't know why, but it just reminds me of a very Conan slash He-Man style pose. And I probably should paint it appropriately, but I just, I want to paint him like He-Man, I think with the bandolier across his chest like that. I think that's how he's supposed to go on his base. Like so. Big dude. Let's see if, oh, I don't have my Marine handy. Where are you, Marine? Anyway. I'm thinking I'm going to build Aya next. Not Aya, Lucy. I don't have Aya. Aya's somewhere else. And Lucy is going to be pretty similar in that she's just about the same amount of pieces. Very simple pattern. It's going to be 
Urza and Alistair that have all the complicated parts here. So let's get Lucy cut out and we'll take a look at her. So next up here is Lucy. And again, much like Zachary, pretty easy construction. Obviously you have the base itself or the topper, I should say, a little bit of custom scenery. They all have these kind of weird smoky things going on there. The legs are actually one piece. I was kind of surprised by this because usually Kingdom Death models not only have to have the lantern as a separate part, but both legs usually. So saving us a step there. The body itself is only two pieces, front and back. We have the head with all the hair attached, which is nice and simple. And then the arms already have the weapons in them. So I, I really got to say, this is just a smooth and easy kit to put together. So let's get her all built. And here is Lucy all finished. Now I haven't glued her to her base and she has a very tiny contact point that's going to keep her there. So we're going to wait on that, but pretty simple construction. The contact point for the head was a little bit tiny and you kind of need to actually glue the torso and the head together and then the arms are going to actually fit inside of the kind of crevice that both the chest and the head make with the hair there. So everything just kind of fits in nice and neat. For some reason, I can't get her torso to get as smoothly together as I want it, and I really did clean it well. You do want to clean off all the edges of the arms as well in order to get them nice and secure, and she really doesn't want to cooperate with me right now. Come on, lady. Anyway, once she's actually glued, I'm sure it'll be fine, but... Boom, there we go. Okay. Anyway, let's move on, and we'll get the other lady of the hour here, which would be... Urza, and I'll get all her parts on camera here. So Urza, much like her predecessors, is going to consist of a base, a base topper, and hers is going all over the place and has a big broken head that she's going to be standing on. A little bit more parts. So her whole torso is one piece with then more of the gear on her back and the back of her skirt armor there. And a little treasure chest. That's going to be another piece. Interesting. Both legs are individual parts. We have her sword, which is going to be shoved into the ground with a crown there. We're going to have... I don't know what this is. <laughs> I don't know what it is at all. I'm assuming... Oh, it's her... It's her chest. Okay. It's not a kingdom death model without having to, you know, glue the breasts on individually. I'm going to tuck in like that. And, oh, yeah, there we go. Everything's been nice and easy, but you want to be really careful because Urza's face, even though it just fell off and it's totally out of focus, is a separate piece. And I can pretty much guarantee, as hard as that is to see at the moment, it's going to be a hard one. Don't lose it. And then we have the other arm, too. Okay? We're getting her all built here. Probably help when she's in focus. Now we got Lucy all done. A couple of things to point out. So, uh, whoa. She's actually got connection points for both her leg, and you can see, hopefully, a little bit more clearly, there is an indentation right about there above my nail where the sword is actually going to rest, and then her back foot. So, you have to connect both the hand and then the. Uh, is that her left hand? <laughs> no. Yeah, her left hand actually has to connect to the top of the sword and getting everything to connect together and then actually match up with the peg or indentation in the base. It's a little bit of a challenge, so, you know, you want to use something, I would suggest using a glue that isn't going to set immediately so you can kind of wiggle it into the correct position. And she'll look like that. So last but not least, then, we've got our buddy Alistair. So let's take a look at what he's got going on as I slide Urza out of the way there. Did I call her Lucy again? So another interesting build. You've got a good chunk of the torso already put together. The... The rest of the waist is two parts with the entire leg on there. We have our shield right here. Another ridiculous decorative base topper. We have his spear, which I just dropped there. Very thin, so be careful with that. His head 
and then the tassel that goes on the spear and I'll have to figure out where exactly that's going to go. Good luck to me. Now we got Alistair finished as well, and for whatever reason, Alistair did not want to cooperate getting his arms attached to his body. I don't know why. Uh, I gotta clean him up a little bit here. He just, he really was uncooperative, and it's not like there was a complicated attachment point. It was just a nice little peg, and that was it. But he had a real tough time deciding to cooperate and getting onto that base, but we did finally get him. And you know what I thought would be fun? We'll take our survivor, and I'd love to compare him to his actual other models available. Just so you guys can see, whoa. Some of the difference in size that we are currently dealing with with Kingdom Death models. So you can see here, this is both the one that comes in the base game that I painted years ago, and the Halloween edition that I have yet to get to, even though Halloween is now past, and obviously our 10th anniversary version as well. Let me see if I can grab some of the other models. We'll give you a quick look at how they stack up to their original forms as well. I'm bringing him back here. You can see Zachary along with his original incarnation, his Halloween incarnation, and then the 10th anniversary version. I did also want to point out his lantern is supposed to go right here. There's a tiny little notch on both the lantern and on his folds of cloth here on his loincloth thing. And that is the actual attachment point. Surprisingly, our lady friend um, Urza doesn't have one, as far as I can tell. And there weren't any extras on the sprue. Why don't we take a look at Urza next? Here you can see Urza as well with her finished counterparts. The original version, much smaller compared to the modern 10th anniversary, who's bulked up significantly. And then I'm 99% sure this was supposed to be Urza. But yeah. Again, just seeing the size and thickness and depth of the model that, you know, you're definitely getting a lot more in terms of three dimensions for the model these days with these kinds of survivors. And I really makes me anxious to get a hold of everything in that gambler's chest and who knows what's coming after that. So finally, let's take a look at Lucy now. We managed to get Lucy to stand back up there. Again, you can see her original incarnation, her Halloween version, and then the 10th anniversary. I think she's probably of the four new models, the flattest and most in need of getting glued to that base. But, you know, I like to get everything down there in between the legs and on the bases as well. So it's going to be a little bit before I get to them. But I got to say, and I feel like I say this every time there's a new Kingdom Death release, but honestly, I think these are probably my favorite models that I've built uh, partly just because they are big and pretty simple to build. They were very well detailed and just the size. I mean, I personally, and I know not everybody's a big fan, but honestly, I'm a real big fan of just how big they are these days. I think it makes painting easier. I think it's easier to get more details. And if you're a sloppy painter like I am, you know, it helps immensely. So, I don't know how long they're going to be available. Last time I checked as I'm filming this video, they're already gone from the website. Um, they are plastic, so it would not surprise me in the least to see them available again for Black Friday. So, if you didn't get them yet, don't despair too much because I have a funny feeling we'll see them back every now and then. So, keep your fingers crossed, keep your eyes peeled, and don't, you know, don't feed the scalpers. At least not too much, okay? With that said, this is High Lord Tamberling with Obscurities Miniatures, and I'd like to thank you all for watching and hope to be back for more. See you all later. Bye bye.